right, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Khan. I am here on staff at, uh, with uh, Northwest Suburban College. Uh, here at Northwest Suburban College, we have taken the initiative to start a U.S. Healthy Stuff Run program with, uh, with the help of, uh, with the help of uh, our uh, coworkers and many inspired individuals. We're happy to have you here, and we will do our best to uh, cater to your U.S. Healthy Stuff Run needs. Uh, so today, what we're going to talk about is pheochromocytoma, a very uh, unique and contemporary disease. So let's quickly uh, get, uh, get into it and, and see what it what exactly is all about. So this is the most common tumor of the adrenal medulla in adults, which secretes epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine, right? Some very uh, important um, neuro neurotransmitters. Associated with von hippel lindau disease, uh, multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2, uh, uh, A and 2B. Uh, when it comes to the anatomy and physiology of the uh, adrenal medulla, the adrenal medulla, the adrenal gland by, the, by itself is actually located right above the, uh, the kidney, basically. The adrenal gland is a triangular looking uh, gland that's actually located right above the kidney and has its own cortex and medulla, just like many other organs, like the kidney itself and the, the brain, in which you have the cerebral cortex and, and medulla oblongata. When it comes to the nervous stimulation of the adrenal uh, medulla, we have the preganglionic sympathetic fibers. When it comes to the secretory products, we have mostly catecholamines, which are epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now, when it comes to facts of pheochromocytoma, right? Pheochromocytoma is a very uh, easy way to remember that it has, uh, a little, we call it the rule of 10, basically. So the rule of 10 basically has 10% malignant, 10% bilateral. So since there's two adrenal glands, one can possibly have two uh, uh, malignant uh, cancers out there. You can have 10% uh, extra adrenal, so they can possibly go outside of the adrenal gland. You can, uh, they can possibly calcify, and 10% of these also happen uh, in kids, right? Now, quick trivia question uh, for you guys. Does anybody recall uh, what chromosome is it that's a, is affiliated with uh, von hippel lindau disease? Anyone? Yes, ma'am. How are you? Chromosome 3. Chromosome 3. Very good. Excellent. Great. So, chromosome 3 is associated with von hippel lindau disease, which is also uh, part of the, uh, you could say, the conglomerate of pheochromocytoma. All right. So, let's talk about symptoms, right? So, when it comes to uh, symptoms, you can have uh, episodic hyperandrogenergic symptoms, right? Like, we call it the rule of five Ps. Uh, comes in spells, it relapses, and remits, right? So what's, so what's peculiar about uh, pheochromocytoma is that it has uh, uh, spells, right? So people will have the, uh, the symptoms of uh, hypertension, right? Uh, patients will complain, you know what, doc? I'm having, uh, uh, like, my chest is pounding, my heart, I feel like my heart is about, is racing, my heart's pounding against my chest, my head is hurting, uh, things of that nature. Uh, there you will also have, so you have pressure, you have pain, there's perspiration, there's sweating, there's palpitation, there's tachycardia, there's, uh, there's also pallor as well, basically, right? So this is basically here that demonstrates some of the symptoms that one would see in uh, pheochromocytoma. A typical triad of a pheochromocytoma would be a patient with headache, sweating, and tachycardia, basically. So patient, the patient would be sweating, the heart rate would be up, and, thing, and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, okay, let's move up to talk about some of the other things that happen here as well. So we have paroxysmal hypertension, patients with, pro with hypertension that is paroxysmal or poorly responsive to standard therapy should be evaluated for pheochromocytoma. Um, hypertension, diabetes, cholesterol, these are the, one of the most uh, common diseases and un unfortunately so uh, here, in, here in the United States. Uh, what happens is that when people have hypertension, they take blood pressure medication, so on and so forth, to try to get it under control. But if certain medic certain, uh, certain, a certain type of blood pressure hypertension goes out of control, this could possibly be pheochromocytoma, which is uh, what we should suspect in, in, in cases where it keeps coming uh, and going, basically. Just like we talked about episodic episodes, uh, ep episodic relapses, uh, that's the, what uh, pheochromocytoma is usually characterized as. What tests should be done to test for pheochromocytoma? We have uh, the urinary DMA, which stands for vinylmandelic acid, basically, right? So this is very specific for pheochromocytoma. So uh, anytime this is seen inside the urine, uh, that's actually a uh, classic clue to say that pheochromocytoma could, could be the possible diagnosis of this patient. A breakdown product of norepinephrine, epinephrine, and plasma catecholines are, are increased, right? With good reason, because in the end, what is pheochromocytoma? Pheochromocytoma is a tumor of the adrenal medulla which secretes more and more epinephrine and norepinephrine, right? So does anyone recall what is the typical triad of a pheochromocytoma? How about you, ma'am? Headache, sweating, and tachycardia. Excellent, definitely. Headache, sweating, tachycardia is a typical presentation of pheochromocytoma, which will uh, definitely give you the clue to uh, diagnose the patient right and to get the right answer on your USMLE Step 1 board, board prep. 
Uh, let's talk about treatment. You have uh, irreversible alpha antagonists like phenoxybenzene, right? Now, quick review about alpha receptors. Alpha receptors basically are meant to cause vasoconstriction. So if you block a constrictor, what do you get? You get vasodilation, right? So now, bucrolcyphone is all about that. Bucrolcyphone is all about hypertension, constricting your blood vessels to some extent, right? So if you give them an alpha blocker, you will, uh, that, that helps uh, you know, big time, definitely. Beta blockers can also be given as well, obviously, because you know, one had a tachycardia, so beta blockers uh, are uh, beta receptors on the heart cells, they will cause more and more, more um, heart racing, right? So when you, when you give this, you can definitely uh, help treat bucrocyphoma as well. Tumor resection is just taking out the tumor itself. You're, you're actually just uh, cutting out the tumor surgically to remove the tumor in order to prevent catecholine release and go away then. And one of the, one of the key things to remember is uh, bucrocyphoma uh, in the end, is that uh, alpha blockade must be achieved before uh, giving uh, beta blockers to avoid hypertensive crisis. Why is that? Alpha blockers cause what? Hypertension. Beta, beta, uh, beta uh, cell receptors cause what? Increased heart rate or possibly some hypertension, right? But if you block strictly uh, the beta receptors, you leave the alpha uh, receptors unopposed. Hence, the alpha receptors will actually start to uh, 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 actually start to have a ball. So they'll actually have uh, more vasoconstriction than ever, which leads to a hypertensive crisis. Hence, one has to uh, block the, the alpha receptors first before giving a patient beta blockers when you suspect uh, bucrocyphoma. Here is a flow chart of the uh, various uh, uh, aspects of bucrocyphoma, right from discontinuing interfering medications and things of that nature, and checking for various catecholamines and things of that nature, right? So this is a preview of uh, of, the, of what could, what you could expect in your future board exam besides the step one, right? So this takes it to a whole nother level. We won't be able to go into that much detail since here at North Bristol Suburban College, we are geared more towards the USM step one program uh, in order to ensure your your, your future success. Uh, this here is the CT scan of your of the of, of the of the abdominal region where you can have where you have the adrenal um, uh, adrenal glands and medulla. This is what it could possibly look like. And uh, with that said, that pretty much uh, sums up your cholecystoma in a uh, to, in, in order to uh, diagnose it, treat it, and possibly identify it in any future uh, future.